his hands, he got a plan In his hands, we don't gotta worry Express my gratitude, uh, amen. I double, triple appreciate it because people do not have to be nice to you. So, Wings of Love family, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart what you've given to the pastor. Those streaming live, thank you as well for your gifts and thank you for your prayers because I really need your prayers. And I thank you so much, amen. Those who were involved, thank you, Stafford. Thank you, Lady J, amen. God bless you. Trustee Jones, all of God's children. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, the best is yet to come. If you can just hold on and hold out, weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming in the morning. But I can't wait till the morning. I don't know about you. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can take it away. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Am I by myself in this sanctuary? Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Now I want you to look. Bless you. Madison Miracle Baby. I want you to look uh, in, in, in the rear and the back. Amen. I know a lot of people come. You know, it's an eyesore. It's hard for you really to hear me preach. You know, you want to win. It's going to be fixed. Kenny was telling me. Kenny, raise your hand in the back. That is still leaking a little bit. You know, there's a leak in this. I mean, it's still leaking <laughs> in this old building in the back. But what he's going to do, they're going to work on the roof. God has blessed us with a few uh, dollars. Amen. They're going to come to you. Come on, praise God. He blessed us with a few dollars. <laughs> Amen. I'm tired of looking at it myself, but Kenny told me, he said, uh, they want to work on the roof first, and that I guess that makes good sense to work on the roof first so, because it continues to leak. So I just want you to know uh, when Pastor come and asks you for uh, money concerning this, that we are doing something about this eyesore. Amen? I said that so you can listen to me preach now. You don't have to look uh, in the ceiling. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. I'd like to invite your attention. We're praying for all the sick and shut in, Minister Brown and others. I'd like to invite your attention to the New Testament collection of writings. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. I know, Minister Jackson, uh, you said is that the only verse, but uh, I have Sister Brown and Lady J in here, and this is a comma. That's not a period, and I didn't want them to check me after I finished. Amen. That's a pause. Amen. You don't just stop there. Amen. It's a comma. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21 in the New Testament. It reads thusly, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, comma, according to the power, power that worketh, worketh in us, comma, Watch this. Unto him be glory in the church. I said that. This, I, you don't hardly move, so I said it like that, you know. In the church, by Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. You may be seated. I want to tag the text and talk about somebody ought to do something. Somebody ought to do something. Thank you, my brother musician. Let's say that again. Somebody ought to do something. You know, there's an adage a lot of people say that talk is cheap. Action speaks louder than words. Brother said, there are some people who watch things happen. Some people don't know what's happening. Some people don't care what is happening. But then there are other folk who is determined to make things happen. Now, let me bring it to our young people. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, like Master P said, you have to be about it, about it, about it, about it. Listen, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you. 
as the church, we ought to wait, Mother Hinton. We ought to watch. But we have to do more, Sister Rogers and Brother Rogers, than just wait and watch. We need to witness and work. Can I preach? Listen, my brothers and sisters, this country is in a mess. There is mayhem everywhere, Brother Lee, Sister Brown. This world, brothers and sisters, is in a state of chaos. And let me take some people back all the way to the temptation. It's like a ball of confusion. Well, come on, you ain't been saved all your life. Listen, if you don't believe me, take a few minutes and watch uh, the news on television. Mm. Just take a, a, a few moments and sit down and read the paper. The political scene has become an expensive three ring circus. You got the Republicans against the Democrats, the Democrats against the Republicans. Let me tell you, it's, it's okay, it's good that you're a Democrat, I ain't gonna fight those who are Republicans, but let me tell you, it's all about a theocracy, meaning God's government. There is the rumble of war among Ukraine and Russia, among Israel and the Palestinians. Somebody ought to do something. When racism continues to rise, it's ugly head to raise its ugly head. Somebody ought to do something. When almost 40 million Americans live in poverty, somebody ought to do something. When approximately 37 million have no health insurance, somebody ought to do something. I'm trying, my Taylor. When children are killing children in unprecedented numbers, somebody ought to do something, do more than just say something. Streets are filled with serious crimes and horrible violence. Carjackings and drive-by shootings have made the American public highly shaky and nervous. Somebody ought to do something. The homeless, the helpless, and the hungry continually increasing in numbers. Work qualities is digressing. Don't seem like nobody want to work. While purchase prices are increasing in terms of food. Can I preach? Financial security is no longer a sure thing to rely on because it seems like you can Put your money in, a, in the bank and you can have a 401k and how many must admit you've had to go in your savings and some of you've had to go in your retirements to pay your bills. Instability rules Wall Street as well as the stock market. Somebody ought to do something. When African American students who attend majority white institutions feel ignored and alienated for their unique circumstance and the color of their skin and not the content of their character, somebody ought to do something. Jails and prisons overflow with black and brown people. Yeah. Somebody ought to do something. Homosexuals and lesbians parade the streets swinging like Tarzan and switching like Jane. <laughs> Drag queens are sitting in the classrooms having Story time with our children. Their own commercial kissing one another in front of our children. Somebody ought to do something. Can I preach? 
one and one half million abortions are committed yearly. Relationships are stressed out and, and strained due to communication, breakdown, immoral behavior has all but destroyed the average family. It seems like there's more divorces in the church than it is in the world. Look like marriage has lost its credibility. Mm-hmm. You got men marrying men. You got women marrying women. Well, let me tell you about your past. There ain't nothing funny about me but <laughs> my last. You got a real 200 and something pound man here. I don't want no rough leg, hard leg, hair on the best man. I want a woman. Let me be specific. I want Lady J. In spite of the stiff law, Fentanyl, Papa Molly, Percocet, on the rise, even some young people have been arrested for selling drugs. Listen, it's killing many of our young people. I'm trying, Sister Kelly. Diseases like cancer have claimed an enormous toll on the population. Somebody ought to say, but before I finish this message, I need everybody who have survived cancer, clap your hands. <laughs> Authorities seem to be powerless to do anything. Educators seem to be frustrated, Lady J and Sister Brown over the situation. Matter of fact, somebody ought to do something starting with the parents because it seemed like everything is controlled by a switch except a child. Light switch. How many of y'all remember when mother used to tell you to pot up those little limbs? I never understood. I'm going to be, I'm going to get a whooping, but you want me to to bring the instrument of my punishment. But can I talk to somebody in here who know parents didn't just say something, they got up and they did something. I'm going to whoop your behind when I, they didn't say behind me. And I thank God for the weapons I received because let me tell I wouldn't be up here preaching. It kept me out of jail. It kept me out. I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish what I got to witness and kept me out of trouble. Thank God. For my parents who didn't just say something. Sister Ruffin, they got up and they did something. When they promised that you're going to get a whooping, you got your behind. Whip! Me too. I remember little Al, watch this Minister Jackson back there. Be quiet. All right, I know you do. Minister, Minister, Minister Jackson. Go up to the school, go up to the school. One teacher. Okay, I can deal with one teacher. Then uh, here come another teacher down the hallway. I'm like, okay, okay, two, let's talk. Then here come three. I saw, that's it, three strikes. <laughs> I went on home. I love him, though. I love him. I love him. I, I was spanking him so that I tore down the blinds. But when I spanked him, I told him I love him. And Tiffany, don't sit over there and think I ain't coming your way. Tiffany! <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany. Tell me, love my children too. Why, why don't y'all run out? Y'all stay with daddy. Watch this. Look, look. Um, uh, Debbie say, Al, you know Tiffany. She want to put that phone down. Tiffany want to put that. I say, what? I just dropped her off. I got to go all the way back over there again. I got over there. I said, get in this car. Come on, look at her walking out. <laughs> she can't take it, Al. Look. <laughs> look, I, I told her. I said, I'm going to whoop you when you get home. But, but, she asked all them questions. Uh, uh, you having Bible class? You barely even come to Bible class. Uh, <laughs> is Al at home? Why you worry about Al being at home? You ain't thinking about no Al being at home. Man. I ain't even give a chance to take a coat off. I, I just went to. 
But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, I thank God, and you ought to be thanking God too, that my children are saved <laughs> and born again because I didn't just sit there. I got up and did something about it. Can I get a witness? Let me tell you, parents, you ought to, ought to have your children to give an account of who you hanging out with. You ought to break into that room and listen to the kind of music. Matter of fact, you better watch them iPads and them iPhones because there's a lot of sexual activity going on. Come on, help me, that you don't even know about. Can I preach? Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. Law officials seem to be helpless with their hands tied. Politicians seem to be completely baffled. What's going on? And many, if not most, seem to think that simply nobody must be able to do anything about today's mixed up, messed up world. Wait a minute before we go eat. I know somebody who's going to do something about it. See, Jesus is more than talk. <laughs> Jesus is action. Can I preach? You need to understand that he is a shot caller. He is a big baller. He is number one stunner. Let me preach. Listen, listen. Jesus, first of all, notice the person, say the person. And I'm going to get you out early. Watch this. Watch this. The writer of Ephesians, Paul said, now unto him. Uh, look at somebody and tell them, it's Jesus. Now unto him. Who went around doing good. Who opened up the eyes of the blind. Who healed the sick. Raised the dead. Fed the hungry. Cast out demons. Jesus who is grandmother's walking cane. Jesus who is bread in a starving land. Shelter over your head. Foundation that can never be broken. King that will never age. Light that will never dim. Glory that will never go out. Somebody ought to know who Jesus is. Jesus, who died on a cross, got darker than a thousand midnights. Jesus, who went down in the grave. They don't talk about this no more, Alan Brown. Got up early Sunday morning. Not with some power. Not with green power. Not with white power. Not with black power. But he got up with all power. In his hands, he says now unto him that is able to do. I ain't going to get to that yet, Al. I said do. Y'all look like the Lord is not still doing anything. I think I believe it's deism who said deism in theology said that the Lord created this world. And he locked the door, took the key, and threw it away and allowed the world, that's what did, allowed the world lead, to operate on its own. I got good news for you to let you know that this world is not operating on its own because God is still large and in charge and in control of every, y'all ain't clapping loud enough. Listen, he says, he is able. Uh, Somebody in here. Uh, no, wait a minute, not yet. I'm, I'm coming. Wait. Somebody in here. I like that keto. Stay right there. Somebody in here. See, Pastor Joe, know that God is able. Man, I can just preach able. Somebody know about the ableness of God. Some of y'all ain't clap. Look at somebody, Jason, you may need to encourage, encourage them. Tell them you need to know about the ableness of God. He said, that is able to do exceedingly, in other words, extremely, abundantly, watch this, plentifully, in large quantities. If be 
people would only give Jesus a chance to do something about today's problem, he can do something about the sin in your life, about the sorrow in your heart, about the sickness in your body, about the strife in your home, about the depression in your life, about the situation on your job. If you give him an opportunity, his love both could and would eliminate war, heal conflicts, improve relationships, destroy selfishness, and mend up broken marriages. Can I preach? Look at somebody and tell them, you need to notice the person. But then secondly, you need to notice the prayer. He says above all that we ask. Y'all got to get this. Uh, we have not because we, y'all help me preach. Jesus said if you ask anything in it shall be, y'all help me preach. Listen, listen, listen. Thank you, my brother. Listen, listen, my brothers and sisters. Watch this. He says, above all that we ask. Wait now. Don't stop there. Even think. I wonder how many in here is occupied with stinking thinking. Put your hand on your, put your hand on your head and say, Lord, get rid of this stinking thinking. You know why you can't think about him? Because you got too many people in your, on your mind. You need to say no vacancies. <laughs> you need to give an eviction notice right now. Person, people, places, and things off your mind. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, boy. This is going to help you. Look at somebody and tell them. You, you, look at them and say, you better start thinking big. You got, you got to stop thinking things going to get better. You got to stop thinking things going to turn around. Come on, use your mind. You got to stop thinking. I ain't going to be in this all, all the time. Oh, you got to stop thinking that I see God already working this thing out while I'm trying to figure it out. He's able. Uh, that we ask or think. Yeah, that's why. That is why. I like old school preaching. That's why. Jesus said that we ought to always pray. And he said that we should not faint, nor should we give up. But then 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my face. He said that you should turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and then I'll heal their land. We are to be the moral compass church and the agents of change in this world. And I need you to look at some more and tell them that the Lord did not call us to sit when he saved us, but he called us to serve. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Charles Spurgeon said,
looking at Pastor Jackson uh, and Pastor Jones uh, and no in 2023 you got power anybody know they got power stand up on your feet and say I got power power no matter how big our obstacle may be we have this power working in us can I get a witness to defeat it no matter how overwhelming the odds may be we have this power working in us no matter I'm going to be out your way how demonstrative our opponents may be we have his power working in us to give us victory let me leave you with this first John 4 and 4 said greater Meet somebody, holler out. Oh, greater. Y'all got me hot now. Oh, greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Look at somebody. You can sit down if you want to. Tell them it's time for the church to do something. We got to stand up, speak up against injustice, uh, against racism. Uh, Martin Luther King didn't just say something. He marched. Uh, Malcolm X uh, didn't just say something. He said, by any means uh, necessary. Harriet Tubman uh, didn't just say something. Uh, she led the slave uh, down the railroad. Uh, say something. He got up and did something. W.E. Du Bois didn't just say something. They got up and did something. Can I get a witness? I'm closing him now. But one of these days, Jesus is coming again to do something about it. He's coming with his hair like lamb's wool. He's coming. Uh, can I get a witness who know? Who believe he's coming? Uh, I don't know when. I don't know where. But I do know. Uh, he know this way. You ought to be clapping your hand. Uh, he know this way. Uh, he's coming again to destroy the Antichrist. He's coming again to destroy the false prophet. He's coming again to lock the devil up in hell. Can I get a witness? Look at somebody. Tell them my hero is on his way back. He's going to do something. Can I get a witness? He's getting ready to bring judgment and wrath on this wicked generation. I'm calling him now, but when he comes, our agonies will give away the comfort. Our troubles will give away the peace. Our grief will give away the joy. Our hope will give away to reality. Our gloom will give away the glory. When he comes, trials will torment us no more. Sickness will afflict us no more. Adversaries will perplex us no more. Cares of this life will burden us no more. Good afternoon, but let me tell you, Jesus, he will fix it. He will fix it. After a while, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say he's gonna fix it. 
He's gonna fix it. He's gonna fix it. He's gonna handle it. He's gonna take care of it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? God bless you. Somebody. the door open. Come on, let a Christmas me as a candidate for baptism. I know you've been hearing about the doctrine of the last days, eschatology. You've been hearing it. I've been hearing it in Sunday school. I've been in church all my life. I've been hearing about the second coming of Jesus. People saying, where is it? Well, let me tell you something. You better be clapping your hands. You ain't got back yet because you ain't got your life together yet. Look at somebody. Tell them some more work <laughs> got to be done. He doesn't wish that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. But watch this. And we're getting out in good time. Don't count his slackness as some men do. Because he is coming back again. Watch this. Pam, he's coming for his church. He's coming for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters. I see. Let me tell you something. I got a little time. I got to get out of here so I can go eat. You can go eat. I don't know what meal time Monday, but I'm going to talk about the spirit of Antichrist. The Antichrist ain't even, he's, he may be here somewhere around here, but the spirit is here against God's truth. People believe a lie before they believe the truth. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you some rumors of wars, wars, pestilence. Earthquakes. How many have seen all these natural disasters that we can't even explain? It's nearer and sooner than we thought. And I don't know about you. This old bald head bearded preacher want to be rapture, rapture ready. Now you can think you're going to be down here all your life. I, 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 I. Let me tell you something, and I got to get out your way. Let me tell you why the Lord allows some things to happen to us. We get sick, pain, sorrow, and stuff like that. You know why he do that? So you, you, you want to you go to heaven. Watch this. Now I'm going to be real. I'm going to move from out of these pews. If y'all got a pocket full of money, your, your, your pocket got the mumps. <laughs> you got, a, you got money, a pocket full of chip, full of cash. You got that moolah, you got a nice little whip, car, got a nice little crib, I mean house, you got designer clothes. I mean, you got everything going good for you. When Jesus come back and you in a situation like that, I tell you, my, you're going to like, Lord, I ain't ready, not yet. I ain't ready to leave this. So what Lord, the Lord does, he put an anticipation in you. Where you yearn to want to go back with him. Look at somebody. Look, where, where's Minister Jackson? He just said about the five virgins. I'm gonna leave. This is serious, gang. And I'm going to leave you alone. You need to have some oil. The oil represent grace and the Holy Spirit. Put your hand on yourself and say, Lord, help me to keep some grace and oil in my lamp. Because you got to go out and meet the bridegroom. He's coming. How many know, how many know you see the signs everywhere? Look at somebody and tell them, I see the signs everywhere, boy. It's everywhere. Don't be scared to look at them. Put a men in your mouth and talk to them. <laughs> Hallelujah. The door's open. We don't, want you to be, we don't want you to miss out. You can repent. Turn from your sins. You have heaven to gain and hell to shine. Come on. Before Jesus come back, you need to come and join Jesus. All right, praise team, come on. The door's open.